Hello, everybody, again. Uh, thank you for your kind introduction, um, Carsten. And um, I'm ha I very happy to show all of you some examples I have prepared in the last uh, year. And um, uh, yeah, how to start? Uh, maybe you already mentioned that it is possible to to use several things even mentioned by Alfred in the first work, workshop on on uh, on Tuesday that we even can work a lot with strings you see here to have a, a simple uh, bore to have a function to show a function graph attached with a tangent in uh, JSX graph code and not realized using a, a sketchometry, we have these three lines. And what we here is used is a tangent object mentioned in the last days already. And so you see, this is very nicely done and very quickly done. And as a result, it may be uh, look like this. You see here uh, is such a JS fiddle. And uh, I hope is a, is a, the code is written large enough, or should I enlarge it? I think it is okay. Okay. Sorry for um, me, it is okay. <laughs> and you see here, uh, it's a bit uh, old style code with a function uh, written directly as a in a single thing and not inside the function graph but we have added some sliders to the sign you see here you can uh, change the um, uh, amplitude and even the uh, frequency of the sign and then you can go around here with that and i like to have much more flexible uh, applets so i like to to choose the function easily uh, to, in, to change it directly inside the board using um, text elements. And uh, then it would be even possible to add the tangent with the same uh, thing. But if I like to do a bit more advanced things, then it is a bit more, um, or I, I, ch I have chosen a different way. and. What I like in between is um, are two um, commands uh, provided by um, Jesse Code. This is uh, one we have seen already sometimes. I think the Java code a snippet to generate a JavaScript function or when we have got it from a string. And then the other one, uh, GC manipulate to get derivatives of a function I have provided. And uh, if we are looking to the Taylor polynomials, then we this is everything we need to uh, get an arbitrary or, or a, a more general um, applet. We have here a function f, then we need uh, some derivatives k, and we need one single point uh, which should be um, draggable. So when we have here something like a small sketch of a function graph or maybe such a sign, uh, then we like to have that the that we can drag the point here on the graph. Everything is done by JSX graph. And then we will see uh, it's a Taylor polynomial. And this is what I like to show you with a quite general applet. And even other things are interesting to construct. For instance, the oscillating circle on a graph. Here we need uh, two things. We need the first derivative and the second derivative and some differential geometry. The polynomial I already mentioned, but even uh, with the 3D stuff, we 
uh, have now the vector field option available. And if we have the vector field, then we even can show a, a, the curl. And I think you will remember the talk last year. I have shown some examples, but this year I will um, show you the way I have implemented to get the curl. And at the end, and this was uh, the initial idea, um, I will show you uh, my implementation to, uh, to demonstrate the spherical harmonic functions, YML, to show or to get an impression of the atomic uh, orbitals of the H atom. All the examples um, I will show today you, uh, I will publish inside the Moodle course or on a GitHub page. So this will be available afterwards. I will start now with the example of the oscillating circle on a graph. At first, I will show the example itself. So um, I just realized that I did not open uh, the example. So um, I will do it now. You see here um, a, a, a JSX graph applet. Here you can choose a function. You can uh, type in here is a, is a term you like to, to have uh, by a, Clicking on set function, it will uh, render it, or it will be rendered. And here you can uh, toggle the view of the tangent and the circle. So now I have here the regular point uh, on the curve, um, and I can add the tangent. And at this point, um, the tangent is uh, computed, I think, in the same way using the tangent object. And afterwards, I uh, added the circle, which has the same curvature, or it touches the graph with the same curvature as the graph has. And in which way I have chosen to show this, or to, to realize this. The first thing I need is the tangent vector. The curve I can interpret as a, a tuple t and f of t. And um, this is done inside a closed object. You see here um, I have used a closed interval inside an open interval to be sure that everything is differentiable. But this is just for the mathematical stuff. And now I try to. Uh, constructs uh, the circle which touches the graph in the point k uh, t0. And here you see, I just, uh, uh, after the talk from Thursday and the presentation of Carson with sketchometry, I tried my first sketch uh, inside uh, sketchometry. And here you see uh, what I need. I need the tangent vector and I, see I need the normal vector. So um, this looks like that. And now um, you see here, this is the same stuff um, we need. I need the tangent vector. This is quite easy. And in 2D, it is uh, quite easy as well to construct the normal to that vector. Why I need is this a normal point. I know that the centroid of this oscillating circle will lie on this normal line. The only thing is, um, I have to check, is it above the graph or below the graph? If I go back to the sketchometry stuff here, then I know at that point that it will be elsewhere on this side. But if I change to this part, I know, OK, this is below the graph. And now we see. Uh, funny stuff, this is related to the second derivative of our function graph. And this is, uh, at the end, what I have used to compute this. I know the tangent is given by this vector 1 and f dot of t, then I get a normal vector by this using the 2D 
um, knowledge about orthogonal vectors. And then I know that the centroid of my circuit is lying on that line. And the curvature I can compute from this term. The so second derivative over 1 plus f prime squared, and then you see here to the power of uh, 3 over 2. And now we see I need the first derivative, I need the second derivative, and I need f. And this I have uh, realized in with by this um, six lines. The first one is to evaluate the input box. Then I have the string of f. The next one is I need the first derivative. So I will build a string. Um, and you see it's nothing else d um, applied to the function stored in uh, strf with respect to x. and. Then I have done the same, and I have applied the first derivative uh, again to the first derivative, and so I got the two, the three functions I need, and then I get from the, them here the Java, JavaScript function, and at the end it should work. Now uh, you see I have not uh, see, uh, showed, have, I have not shown yet how to compute uh, the midpoint of the circle. And this is done uh, num numerically. Here, um, I just will get the radius here um, by computing uh, the, the inverse fraction. And uh, then I can here add this ray, then I get here the radius and the midpoint uh, will be computed inside as a function of uh, the coordinates of the point. Then I will create a circle from that. Um, and so our, it is a full dynamic uh, construction to see the tangent and the oscillating circle. Uh, and the main part is here, uh, these three lines. And now I have to, to show you that it should work. So I will change now here this, and I will choose a sine of x and set this function. And now you see here um, it works, and the circle is on the right side. This was a, a first example I uh, like. Uh, I like to show you, and I will now go on with the next one. Um, just just as a uh, note, you see uh, here that you need this string, for instance, d sine t of t, uh, comma 2 is nothing else, a second derivative of sine of t with respect to t. And uh, so we can get all the strings just by string manipulations. If you're thinking about vector fields, at first I will show um, the example. Here uh, you see a vector field, and I have done the same. Uh, I like to have uh, this more um, highly flexible um, applets where I can change something. For instance, I can set um, the last point, uh, the last coordinate to one, and then I will look at the vector field only. Here you see now the vector field. And uh, to have some more display options, you can change here some parameters. And in my lectures about uh, vector analysis, 
um, or vector calculus, it's uh, quite difficult to students to get an impression what does a curl mean. And in this example, you see the blue uh, vector field, and the blue vector field is a curl um, of the vector field of the red vector field. And so I looked for a solution to get this um, quite or um, in, a, in a flexible manner without a full cas like maxima. What we know, the curl is defined by partial derivatives. I need the vector field or three components, and I need all the par uh, partial deriv uh, um, derivatives. For instance, here, uh, the third uh, um, component uh, differentiates with respect to x, x2. Um, this I have to implement. Uh, I know um, some of you may like this uh, version used by the physicists uh, with a tensor uh, usage but uh, just this is just for fun and what i have done you see here again that i used the input boxes in my uh, applet and from then from them i just created the vector field, stored in f, x, y, and z. And then I needed all, uh, I needed some of the derivatives. And here you see d, f, x2, d, f, x3, and so on. This are as f, x with respect uh, to the second coordinate, differentiate with respect to the third uh, differentiate. And he, now you see uh, the corresponding call. Uh, as variables, I used x, y, and z for um, better, uh, better understanding and readability. And I just built here the string for differentiation. And then I have here in this part all the deriv derivatives in a symbolic order. And here, if you are looking, I just built strings uh, for each component. So you see here, if you look, uh, if you remember, the third component differentiated to the second par uh, direction. This is dfz minus dfy3. And so in this part, I have um, the curl defined. And now I just have to define uh, the vector field as, or I used to define a vector field using the snippet function. And at the end, I can use the vector field object to render this fine uh, stuff here. Um, okay, you need the opacity. And so I, I have got a quite flexible. Sometimes I add some predefined examples where I set the parameters here in, that, uh, in the input boxes to get several things and uh, to show uh, different examples in a um, fast manner because I use these examples even in my lectures. And um, so I like to have some predefined uh, things. Let us uh, come back to the Taylor series or uh, Taylor polynomials. Taylor polynomial, sorry, this is uh, wrong. I just will show the uh, applet. Taylor polynomials um, are used in all engineering lectures. And now you see here, this is the same as we already have seen. There's nothing else, a tangent line. Uh, but now this is um, implemented as a function um, I have got uh, from the symbolic of this blue. Here you see the same function for the oscillating circle. But now I can change here the number of terms in my sum. And now you see here uh, the flexible um, or solution to show uh, the uh, polynomial. And now you see, okay, uh, to get the Taylor polynomial of a polynomial is quite boring. 
But um, if I use now a sine of x, um, then it's, it, it is a bit more interesting. And here we see, oh, we can observe all the mathematical interesting things. You see the convergence radius is increasing. And uh, even we see here it is um, um, open to a buff. And if I uh, go here, you see then it, at the end it is opened uh, to minus infinity and so on. And our, one can play around. To have this uh, here in a flexible banner, I need the symbolic der derivatives, uh, or I like to use the symbolic derivatives of uh, the function as mentioned in the beginning. Um, what I have done is the following. I store the function here in the, oh, in the input uh, box, and then I store it from there in the string, and I generate the function uh, f1. And now I construct recursively all the derivatives um, I need at maximum. So if you see here, I can generate uh, not more than uh, 20 terms in my, uh, or 21 terms in my sum. So I have prepared all of them uh, before. And you see here a solution I have used in a for loop where I just differentiate um, the last derivative once uh, with respect to x. And so I have a field with all these um, strings. And then I decided to interpret it as a polynomial in a different way. And here you see a Horner scheme-like evaluation of the Taylor polynomial. And um, the idea is not to compute all um, uh, powers of this distance x uh, to x0, but to have this only the, the multiplications here as less as possible. And now you see at this point, I just have to evaluate um, the function once, and then I have to multiply with a distance. On the other hand, this uh, point x0 is, in, uh, in terms of JSX graph, nothing else a parameter, because this we drag around. Um, and then I decided to choose this version. What you see, what you, what I have are not shown here, I will add this before publishing it. I even have created an array of all the functions uh, to have uh, to, to easily to access them. And now you see what happens here. You see, I have here the highest derivative, and I evaluate um, the array fun f at this s value from this is a slider of the, uh, the sums at the point x0 and then i can sum up in a simple for loop all the terms and now uh, it is a, a sum running down from n you see here from n to the last one fx this is a additional term here uh, not shown at this at the slide and uh, now you see I have not used an arrow function. It's even possible to use an arrow function here if uh, t ch uh, if x zero changes, this function will evaluate it again, and at the end it, it's still quite fast. But um, so uh, this I this is the result at the end. Just one note, um, this is a graphical tool, JSX graph, and it's not a, a, a CAS system. So please um, 
take care about the strings you are using. So, for instance, um, here we have this function um, in a version where we have the, the factorial um, version of that. And this is not the best version for uh, differentiating something. So it might happen like here that um, you will get an empty um, graph, but this only depends um, that internally this is handled and um, so uh, if you use a function which is easier to handle for the JSX graph symbolic part, then you will get a graph back. Um, I hope it's okay for you, Alfred, that you just started even working on that with it to improve this part. And um, yes, okay. And now uh, I will show you the last thing, the orbits of, in, uh, of the H atom. Um, if you, I, I, or usually this both, both boards should be in one line. Uh, what you see here is the result. We have two parameters, uh, the parameter L and uh, a, a parameter M. This is coming, uh, this is a, our parameters for the sp spherical functions. And here you see um, the absolute value of this function in the real plane. So what we see here is only the real part of a complex function, uh, which is plotted. And then um, to show this, this is plotted um, by an uncle theta and the argument at the end is cosine theta from the spherical coordinates. And here I have added some two parameters for the rendering. So you can, here you see the closed orbit and you even can uh, change the resolution in in each part. And what is uh, my my the goal of this applet was just to change here the parameters and to see the different um, uh, orbits or orbitals for the H atom just by changing here interactively the parameters L and M and to regenerate the surfaces. Internally, we need uh, two things. The first part are Legendre poly polynomials. And there is one formal, uh, the Rodriguez rule to get them. And uh, I observed that this is um, a bit too hard for the, for the current kernel. So I decided to provide a list. Um, I provided this list of, for the, of the first five Legendre polynomials. And from that, the spherical functions are constructed by that um, a definition. And you see, I need the polynomial L, and this is differentiated m times. Uh, and you see, this is a, a good job for uh, uh, for the the manipulate function inside of the um, JSX graph uh, stuff. And at the end, I have to substitute x by cosine theta. And uh, I just will show you the, the, uh, a bit the, the, the code, how I have used it uh, or I have implemented it. Here I have a list with all the Legendre polynomials. And here at this point, you see the string uh, from the definition of YML, where I just add uh, some parameters. And here, the differentiation of the uh, Legendre polynomial uh, takes place. And then everything is collected in one string. 
in the, in, the la in the next string, I generate as a function string with the um, a factor to, to normalize a function. And the curve is plotted just um, using the cosine of the function inside um, the evaluation. One could even substitute x by cosine t and, to, and use t. And this is the first plot. And to generate the surface, the parametric surface, this is um, at the end only one simple call, create a parametric surface and evaluate the function here with a cosine and with different arguments. And so I can see everything in my diagram, in, in my applet. And this is a final result. So at the end, I would like to show you uh, some examples um, how to use um, the JavaScript manipulate function uh, inside your applet if you have the string available for your function. And so this is the last sentence um, of my talk and I'm finished. Uh, now my talk is finished. Thank you for your attention.